I've been looking at this phenomenon of these increasing number of sales of cattle across the high plains. For example, the region that I was primarily looking at, the countryside around Amarillo, Texas, in the Texas Panhandle, is often called the cow-calf capital of the world. About 30% of all U.S. cattle comes from that region. Cattle ranching has managed to outlast in that region a lot of other forms of farming that have had to sort of retreat in the face of this ever worsening water situation. The drought started to hit them about two years ago, and it takes about two years to raise a calf from the point that it's born to the point that it's on somebody's plate. So that means that we're starting to just now see the impacts from that drought that we began a couple of years ago now. Structurally, what we have to understand here is that there isn't one cattle business. There are essentially two cattle businesses which fit together like two pieces of a puzzle. The cow-calf operators breed calves and they raise them up to a weight that they can be sold to a feedlot to be what's called finished. At that point, they become what's called fed cattle and they hang out in the feedlot putting on weight until it's time to ship them off for slaughter. So those businesses are different businesses. Calf raisers are getting hit from two directions. On the one hand, there's less rain falling on the pasture. That means they can't put their cattle out to eat grass, which is the feed that they get for free. And that leaves them a tough choice. They have to choose, do I pay money I really don't have to buy feed for my cattle in the hopes that when it rains, I'll have heavier cattle that I can get a little more money for, or do I sell them now? We brought one load of cows today. Last week, we brought three loads of cows. And uh, I guess we'll keep selling cows till it rains. The combination of the drought, in addition to the added disruption to world grain markets that happened as a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. What we're starting to see is many little things happening at once, which can create a sort of straw that broke the camel's back situation. Some ranchers are forced to, to have to sell. They're having to sell all over the place, you know, all from here all the way through down south, you know, where usually it's green, it's, it's dry up there as well. Right now we're just selling the older cows and it won't be long before we start getting into the younger ones. It's very hard to tell how much climate change has had to do with any particular weather event. But one of the places where the evidence is strongest is with heat. And heat and drought are very closely tied together. What we're seeing with increasing levels of heat is that it makes ground cover often sort of hard and impermeable, such that when you do get a big rain, most of the rain just runs off. You can't use it. We're experiencing, like I said, just a shortage of everything. Cattle, cattle dying because of this heat. Uh, even the, the best of cattle are struggling. The worst thing of all is just the water in general. You know, it's just hurting us all the way around. The long-term trend is one that everybody knows and people just don't really like to talk about, which is this declining picture of groundwater levels and with it, the prospects of civilization as we understand it on the High Plains. I mean, a place where there are community resources, where there are service providers for businesses. I mean, that's all still relatively strong in the area around Amarillo, but in lots of other parts, people use words like depopulated. The big trend is that farmers are getting older, they're much less likely to pass their properties onto their kids, and their kids are much less likely to want them because it's just very, very hard to make a living.